warm-ish breeze, warmish enough for all of these to be outside. And this is what I have been waking up to for the last three mornings. Oh, and it feels so good to have them outside. Most of them anyway. Some of mine are still on the shelves with some lights going sporadically, especially the ones that are in bud and just refuse to open. Speaking of Murasaki here, so welcome to this watering video. Nicole Diana, you asked how I gauge my watering, what I do. I know it's been a while and I replied in a comment to that question. I am a very visual person, so I'm just going to walk through, talk through, water through some examples when they're on the shelf like this. And yes, I have pulled some off the shelf as candidates because when I was touching and working with them this morning, there were certain examples I pulled out for this video. We're just going to pretend that they're on the shelf and we'll go to the little staging area I have on the deep south and go through the watering and why I do what I do depending on the orchid and what it is doing. So get the tripod and let's go over there. Whoops, just before we do that, this is normally where I do my watering. I don't carry my orchids off shelves. I have this tiny little corner where I'm very, very careful with regards to what I do when I bend over because <laughs> it is quite a little tight squeeze over here. But I have my buckets here and my pitcher and normally I work in this area because I like to keep the terracotta wet. So if I'm flushing through, everything just pours onto the terracotta floor and that gives me some margin of extra humidity. For the sake of this video, we're not going to do that. But my blue handled bucket is just plain RO water, pH down to about six, maybe 6.1. And the green handled bucket is the fertilized water, which is now at around 160 parts per million of MSU fertilizer. And today it's pH at 6.1. I normally go down to 5.8, but as it is still kind of cool and the orchids haven't really shot up or started to wake up, it's at 6.1. That's plenty of nutrient supply there for them until they really wake up. All right, now we'll go over to the staging area. Right, so here are the candidates for today, some of them. Based on what they're doing, and there's different examples that I just wanted to show you and talk through with you. I appreciate that you are watching this video very, very much. And if there are any comments or observations, always, always feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Now I have, for example, let's start just with my paths here. I have the Spicerianum right here. And here I have the Gloria Nagel. Now, they don't actually need to be taken care of because their reservoir is relatively full. However, this has been maybe two days, three days. So I do a flush through with plain RO water on my paths every two to three days. See, this one is a little bit more depleted. So I take care of them simply because I want to keep the oxygen flow going and they are very, very grateful for it. Now I have to be careful because I'm an aggressive flusher and I have some new growths on the Spicerianum. So I'm just positioning the pot to the point where I can see that and forgetting about the fact to get the water all the way up to the Lekka. I don't do that anymore. I've lost paths that way. So this is just about giving them the oxygen exchange in the pot and never mind flushing all the way to the surface of the pot. And then normally I try to save the runoff, but I keep a little bit of the plain RO water in the deposit like that and put the orchid back in. Normally when I'm working without filming, I just take the pot and as it pours through the second time, I make sure to grab it a little bit quicker and put the mask underneath 
to catch the runoff, just to be a little bit more prudent in saving some water. And now that it is very windy, I hope it's not catching the mic as I move around. But again, my deposit is not full. It's about half full and that's good enough for now. They have had their flush. So I will put these back where they belong. They're still inside and I'll continue with the next examples. Right, early days when I built this collection, I was thinking of deli containers and everything and I had some of them in deli containers and then I found this setup mask fitting beautifully. And of course my inner pots are not clear. It would help a lot to see everything going on on the inside so early days, I did find it a little bit difficult to guesstimate whether my orchids need to be flushed or watered or anything. And I always had to lift every single orchid out just in case, because I wasn't sure about the weight. But now I'm so sure about the weight, it's about 90% of the time, simply by lifting the pot and I know I need to do something about this pot. Sometimes I could be off the mark simply because the roots have grown, making the pot heavier, and I have to bear that in mind and not just assume that I know what's going on, especially when I've seen very active root growth, like with my Zagaric wax, the pot might feel heavier than I'm accustomed to. And if that is the case, and I don't want to be bothered to lift it out of the mask, I check for sound. There's a certain sound my pots do when they touch their shelves. There's a hollowness to them. Even though the weight might be deceiving, there is a hollowness to them. And that is for me then high noon to actually check what is going on. And you can see with my Zagarik wax, the pot is completely empty and actually dry on the bottom. That debris down there is not even moist. So small panic stations, but nope, the microfiber is still damp. So I haven't missed the mark. And that to me this morning was a big relief. I don't mind the reservoir drying out like this, but again, I prefer there be a little bit of dampness to the reservoir, guaranteeing that my microfiber doesn't, doesn't dry out. But this, this is fine. The microfiber is still damp. At this point, because the orchid is only just now starting to grow, there's a little nubbin swelling there. It's not really the right climate temperature for her to really get going fast. I hope she proves me wrong. I mean, if she proves me wrong, great. But at this point, all I do, normally I take the outer mask, but as I have my picture here with me, here I can flush all the way to the top and I do that twice. All the way to the top, just plain RO water. And then because I'm not going to add fertilizer, I take her and grab her before I get, I lose that runoff water and put her in the mask so that the runoff water can drain into the reservoir like that. And that is far too much. So I drain it away to give me the level that I want in the pot. Again, about half. And now that she's outside, even though the temperatures are much warmer for this week in the past and another week we've got, I'm not trusting the forecast because there's still February and March to go where we can have temperature drops. So I'm not going to go all in on the fertilizer just yet because this may just be a start and it's gonna be okay. There's enough reserves. I'll just watch until the temperatures warm up and see how quickly this growth starts to pick up. That is why there's only RO water in here right now, as opposed to pushing something with fertilizer that in the end it won't, the orchid won't need because actually the temperatures don't match, if that makes sense. Here's my twinkle, red fantasy. I just recently took off all the spikes and again, drinker while in bloom. That reservoir is empty and the debris is dry. The microfiber is almost dry. Not good, not good at all. She's coming into active growth again already, which is great. So this is a little bit 
too dry. It's still damp, but I don't like it that way. I'd like to feel it. If I have to squeeze water out, that is how I like to see my microfiber. So to be on the side of having to touch the microfiber and make sure, is it damp or isn't it? And then realize it's a little bit damp. That's already too dry in my opinion. As she has been heavily fertilized in the past months because of her spikes, this is just going to be a flush and a collecting of the RO water in the reservoir. And she is thirsty, so I have it almost full. So based on the orchid's attributes, that reservoir is going to be a little bit fuller than I would do with all the others, because if this one's starting to come into active growth already, then I'm going to be pouring water through there straight away so that I don't get any concertina leaves. And this, can you come out? Yeah. And you can see that maybe, maybe just missing the mark on that microfiber, you see that kinked leaf there? Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But that reservoir on the twinkles in general stay quite full so that there's never any doubt about having access to water. The next example is a juvenile of my Cattleya iricolor. She felt light and she sounded hollow against the rack. And then when I picked her up, sure enough, it was dry, but thankfully the microfiber is still damp. So we're gonna take care of her as well. I flush normally the outer mask twice. The amount of the outer mask goes through twice. She is actively growing, so in this case, this growth here, in this case, I provide fertilized water, but only because of the time of year at 160 parts per million, and the deposit is about a little over half full. Because of her active growth, she is maturing this growth. She's a very slow grower, but still, there is something happening, and I'd like to encourage that. When it comes to these little semi-hydro pots that are in classic semi-hydro with the holes and everything, yes, I can figure it out by weight. This is Lekka, this is Lava Rock, so clearly this one's heavier than that. If I'm unsure, because I've just recently watered this Dendrobium Aberrant cross with Polysema, if I'm unsure, I tip the pot. Uh, that is, that, that reservoir is empty. It is an active growth and it is drinking a lot. <laughs> so I'm just going to flush it through once. And the same with my Leopoldii. Just flushing through. I just put water on that new growth. Not bothered, it shouldn't be a problem because it is very windy where she lives. I brought this one outside to live outside while we've got these warm temperatures. So that's not a problem, not concerned. I try to avoid to get water on new growths, obviously, but uh, I might just get away with it today because of that breeze where she lives. On the west side rack. Okay, this one, having been flushed through, will now get fertilized water because it is an active growth, all the way to fill up that reservoir. And then note to self, I don't want to have any more of these crinkly leaves. So that, I have to be really, really on top of this one while it's growing. That was fast to empty the reservoir that quickly. Next one that I have is right here. It's my Gyra Kiku. Pot felt light, but it's, it's fine. So, Today, for example, I picked this one up and it felt light, but it has enough water in it. So that was an error of judgment on my part. Even the sound, 
Hence, I brought it out, but the pot still has enough in it. This orchid, for example, is heavy simply because of its structures. Big orchid, big structures, something else that I take into consideration, not just the size of the pot. So this one just feels heavy for the sake of being so big. And you can see the reservoir is empty, but it's not. The microfiber still squeezes out water, and that's what I want to see. Still, we're gonna give her a flush. The reservoir is empty. And get her settled back up on the top shelf to get the maximum sun on the west side. Now she is in active growth. And because of that, I have got fertilizer now in the reservoir. I only see one growth so far, but because of that, she gets the fertilized water. And because she is thirsty, I fill this one up pretty much to the top of what I am, I am allowed this time of year. What I try to feel when I put the pot back in is, is there a resistance on the bottom of the pot to when it touches the water? If that is the case, the level is too high and actually the, water, the bottom of the inner pot is submerged in the reservoir. I don't want that this time of year. In the summer, I'm really not bothered because it's just like sucked up, evaporates, it's gone. But this time of year, I'm a bit more cautious. I don't want the bottom of my inner pot settling on the level of the water. And then I have my panaricas here and they feel heavy. They always feel heavy, no matter what's going on in the pot. And it's good to know that because these need to be double checked a lot. The pot is dry. The microfiber, I can still squeeze water, so no problems there. And because this one is maturing a growth right here, first of all, it's just going to get a flush. And the reservoir is getting fertilized water. I find that panaricas are extremely hungry. And another thing I did with this one today was to treat the spotting. I'm not happy about this spotting here. So I took a cotton swab with hydrogen peroxide and every leaf I treated with just hydrogen peroxide and cotton swab. Eventually when these come outside, if I, like for example tomorrow, I'm going to spray them down with a copper fungicide. But um, I'm also quite aware of all the sheaths it has. So it has to be another day like today. But just for a quick intervention, I went with the cotton and the hydrogen peroxide. Here's another panarica. This is my Ionocentra, growing really well. It has a sheath in there. And again, it's a big orchid. It feels heavy all the time. But you can see, whoop, apart from roots growing down into the bottom, which is awesome, you can see how wet the microfiber is and the deposit still has some water in it. So I'm not going to do anything about that. This time, there is no mineral buildup on the surface of the leka where I need to like double intervene in order to give it an extra flush to release those salts. So I'm not intervening on this one. It still has plenty, which is kind of silly because maybe tomorrow or next day, I'll be pulling her out again to do what I'm not doing now. But that's not the point. This is not, for me, it's not about what is convenient for me. And just because I can't be, let's say, bothered to pull her out in tomorrow or next day. I have to do what I have to do based on what the orchid is doing. So just because it would be convenient to take care of her right now, it's not her time. She hasn't done, she hasn't absorbed the entire reservoir and she's fine. There's no mineral deposits. She's taking in all the fertilizer. I don't have to double flush. I don't have to worry about it. We've had classic semi-hydro flush, fertilizer, just a plain old flush. Even though I have a new growth, it's still at the baby stages because of climate and temperature, like my Zagarig wax. Even though it's starting a baby growth, temperature is not up to par 
there's not that massive reaction or a burst of growth. I feel that if I put fertilizer into the reservoir now, it's just going to accumulate on the surface because the orchid at this stage is only just starting. Twinkle, different story, simply because it is just a vigorous grower. It's kicking back into action. And then, yeah, the Iricolor, despite being slow, it is growing. The growth is already up to here. It needs more sustenance. For that reason, I have my winter dosage of 160 parts per million in the pot for her to absorb. And the same with my Schomborkia here. Basically, the sound of the pot tells me what's going on if I just lift it. If there is liquid in there and I'm still just standing on my rack and just sort of touching my pots as I touch them and lift them up, I can shake them and feel a jiggle and a wobble and a resistance in the base. If the sound doesn't convince me, I give them a little wobble and it tells me there's water in there. Even the little amount of water I can feel here. I can feel it jiggling in the bottom of the pot. So that's what happens when they're on the shelf. And I think I've covered all my observations regarding my watering. So Nicole, if you have any more questions, please let me know. From here on in, it's just a touch and go, a feel a kind of thing. And depending on what the orchid does is how I respond. And that is what I do with my collection every day. Every day, sometimes twice a day, simply because I wasn't sure, did I actually touch that pot? Maybe I should just get up and have a look-see. <laughs> it happens, it really does. So thank you, I hope that this was of help. Let me know if so, and if not, if I've left any doubts and I didn't circle back to a thought, that also happens, leave it in the comments below. Appreciate your time. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.